Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. This is the site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed and his victor claimed the throne. October 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players. Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England, and his challenger, William. Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north another threat to his crown, so he raced to fight them. In France, William waited for the right conditions to sail across the Channel to England. The weather cleared. He seized his chance. Two hundred and fifty miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. Now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. At nine o'clock in the morning, on this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. On October 14, 1066, William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. launching a direct assault on the shield wall. Though William's army fought fiercely against the shield wall, it would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. Oh, 
William's feigned retreat was working. The Anglo-Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. men no longer in shield wall formation, William could pick them off as they charged. Saxons had deployed rows of spearmen to push back the invaders, but William had an answer. His sharp-eyed archers. <laughs> Additional Norman archers joined the battle. arms reinforced William's army. Anglo-Saxon archers joined the fray, and the Normans' deadly cavalry ready to charge. But first, William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. threat of spearmen cleared from the field, William's cavalry was free to charge at the Anglo-Saxon archers. Anglo-Saxon army was in disarray. Their shield wall had been neutralized and their numbers were dwindling. Now the only thing standing between William and victory was King Harold himself. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives to save his.
the Anglo-Saxon King Harold had fallen. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. Leaderless, the last of the Anglo-Saxon army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king, but William's quest to rule England was just beginning. At Guédelon in France, to understand how castles were constructed, they're building one from scratch, using just the tools and materials of the medieval age. It's a 25-year project, the world's biggest archaeological experiment. The most important defensive feature of any castle was the wall surrounding it. Castle walls had to be incredibly thick in order to resist attack and absorb the impact of projectiles fired from trebuchets. The curtain wall was over 20 feet deep, interspersed with towers. In earlier Norman castles, they were square. But while on crusade, European knights saw that eastern towers were round. They realized that eliminating corners not only made them stronger, but also provided a better view of the surrounding landscape. Completing the walls will take some 30,000 tonnes of sandstone. Transport costs in the Middle Ages were incredibly expensive. So having a good supply of local stone close to the castle was vital. To extract it from the quarry, first a row of holes is hand-drilled. Once all the holes are ready, I'm ready to put in the iron wedges and I'm ready to split it open by hitting very hard on each wedge with a big sledgehammer. The stone is split into usable blocks, then transported using horsepower and human effort. This treadwheel crane can lift up to half a tonne. The walls are built like sandwiches. On the outside, you have facing walls built from better quality stones. And the inside, the rubble cores, they're built with softer stones and other offcuts from the quarry. And they're built up in layers with a very thick, coarse mortar. This ingenious method makes the walls better able to withstand hits from a trebuchet. Sandstone is too hard to be carved into intricate windows, vaults and steps. Instead, softer, more expensive limestone is used. These sophisticated building techniques make castles the ultimate feats of medieval engineering. It's a testament to their construction that so many still stand today. Battle of Hastings, the death of one man changed the course of history. The Anglo-Saxon King Harold was killed here, on England's south coast. His army defeated by William of Normandy. Anglo-Saxon rule was over forever. At Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day 1066, William was crowned the first Norman King of England. Now he had to secure power across the country. He began by stamping his mark on the landscape, building cathedrals and castles at strategic locations. Nothing like them had been seen in England before. 
they reminded the Anglo-Saxon population exactly who was in charge. But not all were content with living under Norman rule. Anglo-Saxon revolts broke out across the country. King William acted quickly to crush these rebellions. But there was one region where dissent was spiraling out of control. The north of England. In 1069, a group of lords from Northumbria formed an alliance with Viking invaders. Together they approached Norman-held York. A large city with an important cathedral, still protected by ancient Roman walls. But the walls couldn't save York. The city and the castle fell to the rebels. William's new kingdom was under threat. He had to get the city back under Norman control. William had no choice but to order his men north. But as the Norman forces set off on their long march towards York, how much resistance from the rebels would they encounter? William the Conqueror marched north with his army of Normans determined to take back the rebel-held city of York. But in his path stood rebel towns that harbored William's northern enemies. He would take the towns back by force. Act on this, less commandments. The Normans captured the town of Middlethorpe, establishing their presence in the north. With reinforcements to his army soon arriving, William would need more resources to supply them. Access met one, je commande, avant. Apertisez votre courage, compagnon. En farat? 
Pero, ya pere. Escolto. ¿Qué? Edifico. Laburo. Secco. Sì. Ubi vado. What? Spero. Materia. Ok. What? La burro. ¿Qué? Escolto. Cavalarios. Sí. 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 The Norman army was now well supplied by a town, but it would take a sustained effort to keep the army at full strength. Another rebel town, Fulford, stood in defiance to William's rule. Oh, 
Escolto. La cubo. Attention Arco Raté Arkiers Vos stress la caisse Honor reste d'obéir Incontinent Soyez prêts, compagnon Venez auditer votre yet pose à moi. Avant, compagnon. Avant, compagnon. Cavalerie, course au reste. L'heure est de me soigner. Ici, ici. Ayuda. Le mec d'essai, Arquière.
With the Fulford Rebels eliminated, William was one step closer to York. Knowing he would face strong resistance in the city, William prepared to bolster his cavalry. Escolté. Tous. Et Barats. Comprendo. Cabo. The Norman army came under attack from a new enemy, the Danes. <laughs> William's army held back the Danes' attack, but they threatened to return unless William paid them in gold.
William's reinforcements from the south had arrived, adding vital numbers to his Norman army. Attendez les commandes, je commande, avant. Arquière par. Attendez. Avant, compagnon. Apertisez votre courage, compagnon. Quando je commande, avant. Avant, compagnon. Votre yet pose The Normans discovered the source of the Dane threat, an outpost on the water. William had a choice. Bypass the encampment, destroy it, or pay the Danes the gold they demanded.
In destroying the Dane outpost, William stripped the rebels of a crucial ally. William's ultimate goal was within his grasp. All that remained was to enter York and destroy its keep. Soyez prêts, compagnon, pour votre service. Quand je commande, avant.
Mauvais, elle descourait. Leur apertisette, votre courage, compagnon. army poured into York and began sacking the town as they bore down on the keep.
Escuela. Parate por la bora. Vado la bora.
The keep fell to the Norman army, and York was secured. The Northern Rebellion was over, and William the Conqueror was uncontested as King of England. One weapon more than any other dominated warfare in the Norman period, the crossbow. century crossbows like this were the culmination of centuries of development. With limbs made of steel, they were incredibly powerful. But earlier Norman crossbows had limbs made of wood. There was a limit to how powerful these wooden bows could be. So the idea that Norman crossbows were a powerful weapon is really a myth. Despite this, they were effective at medium range, and that was enough in battle. Drawing the bow repeatedly took a lot of strength. Thankfully, help was at hand. A crossbowman spanned his weapon with a device called a belt and claw. This gave him extra leverage, allowing him to use his back and legs to draw the string. Crossbowmen were vulnerable on a battlefield, so they carried large shields called pavises. So they could hunker down behind, load, pop up, shoot, and then duck back down again to reload. Crossbows were accurate, took less training, and used cheaper ammunition than the longbow. Most importantly, you could wait to take your shot, so they were perfect for siege situations. To protect crossbowmen when they were defending castles, they used specially built wooden galleries called hoardings. But shooting down towards an approaching enemy presented its own problems. How to stop the bolt from falling off the crossbow before it could be shot? What they did is just place the thumb loosely on the top of the bolt, which is just enough with light pressure to hold it in place. Around 1200, the Norman wooden crossbow was superseded by a new design, the composite bow. With limbs made from horn and sinew, they could be made more compact than a wooden bow. And they could deliver up to four times the punch. They were, however, more expensive. So whether on the battlefield or the castle rampart, simple wooden crossbows remained the main weapon of the day.